Welcome to the Challenge Podcast, brought to you by Raider Concealment. Sponsored by Habit Brand Clothing, I'm your master of ceremonies, Greg Conkle. I caught up with Brad and Scott on the road. They're on their three-state tour right now, turkey tour, I should add. And uh, Brad and Scott, how's it going? It's going good, man. How are you? All right. I'm staying safe, you know, in that enclosed thing. You know, you can see it's only me in here and a couple camera guys out there. But we are all six feet apart. So, anyway, I see you got a bird back there. Yeah, man. We shot him about an hour ago. Well, do you know the weight? you know the beard length and spurs and all that? Yeah, he weighed uh, right at 20 pounds. We think my scale's off because everyone says uh, that bird's heavier than that. Uh, almost a 10-inch beard and uh, inch spurs but we fanned him in with a decoy and a full fan and brad was right over my shoulder and dave was behind so we had three guys hiding behind, hiding behind a turkey fan and shot him at 37 yards so it was pretty exciting wow. well thank goodness for this raider concealment i hear you and thank god i wasn't there because you wouldn't have got me behind the fan <laughs> <laughs> we'd have anyway. a lot bigger turkey yeah. Oh, anyway, well, uh, well, tell us about your experiences. You know, there's always experiences. Uh, the challenge outdoors, you know, there's always some kind of challenge when we go somewhere. So yeah. well, tell us a little bit about it. started off since he was the first one to knock a bird down. <laughs> well, you talk about challenges, and we have had quite a few. I mean, there's a big number of, of things that have gone wrong and gone right. And But uh, the first afternoon, we uh, split up. And I went to a, a farm that Scott killed a nice bird on last year. Didn't know what to do. We just went and set up. And uh, about five minutes after I sat down, I noticed there was a bird on the property next to us, which we don't have permission to hunt. So I threw out a few calls, and he started heading our way. And uh, so we got ready, and he went behind some brush, and I didn't see him for 10 or 15 minutes. So I assumed that, you know, I'd lost him. Well, then I noticed he was on the hillside about 300 yards out. And I called a few times, and he strutted and gobbled. And then I finally just shut up. And after a while, he couldn't take it. He started feeding his way down, and it took forever to get there. But finally, he come in at 30 yards. My battery was flashing low battery, low battery. And I was like, man, I've got to do this now. Shot him at 30 yards and just dropped him dead right there. So I'm doing my little recap on the camera. Yeah, you'll love this, Greg. I look up, and I see a coyote out there, and it starts coming in to get my turkey. And I'm like, so I quickly reloaded, you know, we're shooting those CVAs, it's a single shot. So I reloaded, and sure enough, that tur uh, turkey was laying there, the coyote circle around, come running in, it, and I shot it 10 yards from the turkey. Wow. So in five minutes, I'd kill both of them. He skidded to a dead stop, dead center of the frame on the camera. <laughs> it was all awesome. question, question is, did you get that on film? Yeah. I did. Awesome. I actually did. That would be Believe great. Oh, that's it's cool. been different out here this year, though, Greg. You know, I mean, we haven't had those classic hunts like, you know, you and I and, and Brad have had in the past. I mean, we put the decoys out, and they'll come in to about 80 yards and just lock up. And it's like, that's as far as they're coming. And I actually took a shot at a bird yesterday. I, th I thought he was right at 60, you know. And, you know, we've knocked birds down at 63, 65 yards with that. And I took a shot thinking he was inside that, ended up being 68 yards. Knocked a lot of feathers off of him, but he got up and flew, and Brad and Dave were on the other side of the field, and, and they saw him walking off, you know, so no harm, no foul there. But uh, it's it's just been different out here this year. I don't know what stage is going on, really. They're not um, – I think they're hinned up. Well, they're, they're hinned up, but it's like the traditional hen and Jake. The gobblers ain't coming in to kind of run them off, you know, so it's it's kind of weird in that sense, but it's maybe it's, they don't feel them as being any – challenge yeah any challenge to you know what they're doing but we started fanning today with my decoy it's a half decoy with a tail feather and man they have came on a string to that so yeah tell us about that first one that came in what first one? the first one that you fanned yeah so we're down here at the farm you know josh and nikki's place and we come down the hill there by the fuel barrel and yeah and uh david spotted a gobbler out there strutting we didn't see any hens at the time and i had my Get me on my shoulder, so Brad and David they come up with a good plan to meet belly crawling out there. So uh, I did it, and 
it worked like a charm, man. I mean, that son of a gun left his hands at like two or 300 yards. David stayed back and was calling, and I did a gobble right there, you know, to get his attention. But once, once he saw that, I come through that thick grass, you know. Once I plopped that thing on the edge, man, he was on a string. Got him at uh, 28, 28 yards. 28 yards. Wow. Had BB right on his waddles, knocked feathers out of him, knocked him down, and he got up and flew off. So I don't uh. know what the heck. So we checked my gun. I was about two or three inches to the right, and um, we you know, made a quick adjustment and we went off to search for another one and it probably wasn't an hour later we had knocked knocked one down at uh 37 yards that's that's this one here and uh man that that fanning is something else so we just changed it up man we got a lot of a lot more aggressive with uh this being the last full day here in kansas you know it was like man we just got to keep going keep hitting different farms there's more right. public land out here this year than what we uh what we normally get to hunt. Right. I actually shot this bird on public land, so uh, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Man. Well, the name of the yeah. show is the challenge, so we decided that'd make it a little bit more challenging, you know, is trying to use that fan and belly crawling. And, you know, me and Dave were enjoying, I was staying back on some hay bales filming, and we were enjoying watching Scott really work hard crawling through grass and ticks and everything. I had the yeah. GoPro on my gun on that first one, and then I figured out I could slide it up next to the decoy on the stick and have it actually right out in front of the fan. So we had that running on the second one. So uh, That's that, great. that second one, this one here, man, he come in, Greg, and at like 37 yards, he was in full strut, ready to whoop some butt. And then he just come out of strut, turned like he was going to walk off. And I literally just dropped the decoy and got on him and shot him. And I thought he was going to freak out then. I was probably going to be taking a little bit of a running shot. He gave me a good shot. and not, That was actually harder than the first shot, wide open. Well, I don't know. Well, you guys are talking about, you know, these guys are, there's a different kind of thing going on with the turkeys. You know, well, it's a new age. You know, they have Google Earth, they have Facebook, they see you on FaceTime, so they're staying away, man. You know, I've, I've got the same thing going on where I'm at. They kind of skirt around the decoys. Is in the one gobbler I had just strutting, and he just sticks his head up to see, are you coming? And then he struts some more, and then he sticks his head up and looks, and you know, and then he walked off. So I've I've, I've experienced the same kind of thing. But uh, so you guys are mentioned that you're using the CVA. Are you both using the same? Yeah. The first day I hunted, I used my 410, and I called in a beautiful bird at like what a 50, 50, 50, 56 yards. Just too far for that 410. So after that, I was like, you know, let's get this trip started off right. So I pulled out the 12 gauge, and, and we've been yeah. with that ever since. But you know, we were Facebook live when I for about an hour 20 minutes when I sh when I shot at that bird yesterday, and David had roosted it, and they went and got set up, you know, 100 yards from him. And I was like, well, I'll just go sit way over here on the other side of the field, Greg, and put a decoy out because you know how it is out here. You may be calling to one bird, and another one ends up coming in, and Right. Him and one other bird ended up coming in and just walked right away from David and Greg, I mean, uh, Brad, and oh, Brad's wow. over there going, look at this, look at this, Carol, Carol. I told him in the truck that morning before we left, I said, what's going to happen is we're going to set up right on these roosted birds, and it's going to fly down and go 400 yards to Scott, and he'll kill it. That's well, Carol Luck for you. It almost worked out, though. Well, he needed to come about another 10 <laughs> 10 yards and i probably would have knocked him down i mean we knocked some feathers out of him and pretty good bit of feathers but luckily he flew straight up flew over some uh, crp on a hillside and, and david and brad could see him from where they were set yeah, up he was said right. he just walked off no you know started feeding yeah so he was missing a tail feather in the middle so we're he's easy to identify right now all right so to sum up the trip so far greg we've had a lot of close calls we've watched a lot of birds we've chased a lot of birds the two guys <laughs> have missed a few birds not a few well two for you and one for david that makes three misses <laughs> that's yeah, a mine, few the first one I, i'm not really concerned about that i was just out of range but so don't no need to go sight the gun in right at 68 yards so but then that one today it was like I don't remember missing a bird inside 30 yards, but right. I'm saying it ain't happened and it'll happen again. But and then David, you know, 50 yards thereabouts with that CVA, and you know he's normally knocking birds there too. But he he had to swing way over to his left, and he's he's left-handed, and he thinks when he swung around, he didn't he was leading the bird, 
and he, he sh it looks like he shot in front of him, but we sh we checked his gun, and we're pretty satisfied it's dead on. So, and as you well know, Greg, usually Brad's the one with the bad luck, and th these two always you know right. knocking them down to Georgia, and I haven't heard a gobble, so right. I'm milking it for all it's worth because it's gonna switch out probably by the time we go to the next. Day. Hey, I'm proud of that bird, man. I have had to work my butt off for this thing. Well, I remember. Tomorrow, Greg. Right. I hear you. And I remember seeing Brad post of the bird, and I thought, Brad got a bird first? <laughs> That's. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. I said, is this, is this the Florida bird, or is this the. <laughs> I said, it just doesn't normally happen that way, but uh, that, I'm glad for you. <laughs> We've been doing this for 20, over 20 years, and how many times has it been? <laughs> I work and work and work and bad things happen. And Scott walks out and goes, boom, he's gone. Right. The day he was having all the good luck when he shot his bird, I get to my spot on public ground. There's a guy parked there. What I had left my chair in there in a decoy because I was going back that afternoon and 400 acres, right? So I'm like, I'm going in there at least to get my chair. So <laughs> I get in there. I don't see him. He ends up being a mushroom hunter. Wasn't even hunting for turkeys. Wow. Walks right by me, you know. Now let's clarify the, mar the mushroom hunter thing before because <laughs> yeah, they're, they're morel, they're morel mushrooms, mushrooms the right? Cook, I, not the yeah, kind I didn't want you to be looking under cow patties. Now don't ask me. <laughs> yeah, no, not that, that kind. So he, okay. comes, you know, he gets about he gets about thirty yards from me and yells out, "Seen anything?" And I'm like, uh, "No." You know, one word answer. You know, he goes, "My yeah. bad." I'm like, "No problem." And uh, that's turn the camera on you know to do a little intro there and the battery's completely dead so i'm mad as a wet turkey right and i'm texting brad telling him all my issues and he's like well the good news is i just called in the gobbler from 300 yards and shot him well, I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. well that's the that's good news congratulations brad thank <laughs> you buddy i wish so, you were here with me i wish i was there too man it'd be awesome but uh um What's up next? Where are we going from here? Well, tomorrow morning we're going to pack up and head over to Colorado. We got permission to hunt a new spot over there with a wildlife biologist from the National Wild Turkey Federation. Uh, he's got several thousand acres, and we've uh, not hunted turkeys in Colorado in many, many years, so we decided to give it a shot, and we're really excited. He says there's lots and lots of birds, so we'll see how that turns out. After that, we're going to hunt with uh, Brant and Ellen over in Wyoming. You know all about that. Right. Day. How long, how long are you going to be, be in, in Colorado? Colorado? About we, four or five days. Uh, well, yeah. we only really allowed for three, but we may stretch it out and uh, spend a little more time in Colorado than we do Wyoming. You know, right. not saying it ain't easy, but we've been to Wyoming. We know, or not saying it's not hard. We've been to Wyoming, kind of know what what to expect there colorado you know we're gonna be searching new ground so i think we're gonna need a little more time there than we would in wyoming we just see how it plays out yeah right well i remember my experiences in uh wyoming now you know i tell the story it's very exciting but when you, know, you really say you know i kind of shot this bird in the guy's back pasture <laughs> Didn't have to really go. It was go still a wild walk. bird. It was. Yeah, it was a wild dog. bird. I mean, heck, a lot of those birds roost near the houses because that's all only trees around. I know. I just put up a yard, a lawn chair in the back of a pickup truck and wait for them to come in. Well, that... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well but that's it's, the way uh, they. A lot of them hunt in Wyoming. You know, they shoot them yeah. with a twenty-two, two fifty at four hundred yards. They they don't yeah. hunt them like we do in the south. Man, right. Greg, you know, we've shot birds a lot of different ways with bows and muzzle loaders and shotguns and 20 gauges. And, you know, we're trying to do this 410 right. thing right now. But that fanning thing, man, I am freaking hooked on that. I hear you. That seems like it'd be an awesome experience. Well, <laughs> well it's just it's action. You know, either works right. or nothing and you're on the next bird. It's not, a, you know, sitting still, you know, one spot yeah. for an hour or so. It's, you know, it's more action-packed. You can cover a lot more ground, see a lot more ground. So right, well. Like well, that's why I like turkey hunting, because it is more interactive than deer. You know, I mean, yeah. deer, you get, you're sitting and waiting, you know, but turkeys, you can make it just as interactive as you want, you know, like you guys are doing, you know, and, and making those experiences. <laughs> so, right. well, the, well, the other good thing about turkey hunting, you have to worry about how you smell like you do with deer hunts. You wear it's a good same thing. clothes four or five days in a row. I know, that's what I was thinking the other day when I went, you know, I was like, man, I don't have to take a shower. I'm wearing the same camo. I'm, you know, it's like, it's exactly. great. 
<laughs> we are all wanting a shower right now because we, we we walk through tall grass. We're freaking wet from the knees down. Our feet are soaked. We got wet socks on. Yeah, I hear you. We've got ticks crawling all over us. I know. As we see. get done here, we're going to go grab a shower. The well, I see part both, of uh, turkey hunting. I hear you. I see both of you scratching and itching, so uh, <laughs> it looks good. You but, know how it is. Once you get one or two, you start thinking everywhere. You just, every little thing, is that a tick? Is that a tick? Every freckle looks like a tick. You know? Right. I, how many times have I asked Brad, is there a tick on my neck? Does it? Do you see a tick on my neck? <laughs> right. What about back of my arm? <laughs> well, it's good to take time out of the hunting schedule and talk with you guys, man, and I uh, wish you guys the best of luck in Colorado and on to Wyoming and maybe we'll try and hook up with you guys while you're in Colorado and Wyoming so we'll see yeah, how we'll that goes cool. yeah, yeah we'll see how it goes you know I know the service here is pretty shoddy I, I'm, I don't know how the video is coming through but uh you know it is what it is we're on the road well, we're out here in the middle of nowhere so uh well, well I'm, probably I'm perfectly clear Colorado and Wyoming I'm perfectly clear on this set. You know, you guys are pixelated a little bit, but hey, that's okay. We're live and in, in, in charge and, re, you know, all that good stuff. So, keep it <laughs> but, real, buddy. That's right. Well, it's good to talk with you guys. I know you want to get and go get a shower and then maybe you going out tonight. That's up to David. We're tagged out. All right. So it's David's turn. He's all right. He's standing over here five, five feet from me, glass in the cornfield right now. So. <laughs> yeah, as we were setting this up, you guys were hearing a turkey goblin out there in the field. Yeah. He was wanting to go yeah. take off Didn't after it, that. but I was hoping he would have come into the shot and showed us the turkey. But uh, all right, well, I just wanted to get you guys on and let everybody see and say hey and hear your experiences. So well, it's good talking to you, man. We're having a great time, and we'll keep keep you updated of how things are going. Yeah, all right. Things keep going like this with this coronavirus. We'll have to keep doing podcasts like this, I guess. I, I hear you. I hear you. What's well, great to talk with you guys on here? Skype, man. Who would ever think that I could talk to you guys in Kansas and I'm here in Georgia? But man, I just want to let everybody know that we are filming for next year's season, right? That's right. We'll be on 34th quarter on the Pursuit Channel at 4:30 on Saturdays. 4:30 on Saturdays. Sounds great. Well, you guys be safe, and we'll catch up with you later on in Colorado and Wyoming. So for Raider Concealment and Challenge Outdoors podcast, sponsored by Habit Brand Clothing, I'm Greg Conkle, and we'll see you next time right here on the Challenge Podcast. Hey guys, Brad Frost from Raider Concealment, and I'd like to encourage everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the like button, and also ring the notification bell so that you'll get all the updates for our upcoming video.